<laughs> we had to record Good it. morning, Nerd Fam, and a welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We're here at Supercomputing at 2024, just kicking off day one of our three days of coverage on theCUBE. My name's Savannah Peterson. Delighted to have this power-packed panel. My goodness, <laughs> Dion, Shimon, and, and Ronan, thank you so much for taking the time this morning. It's a busy day. It's already oh, buzzing. Mm -hmm. You guys are smiling. I'm loving the vibes. Are you having a good hey, time so far? It's been a Amazing. great start so far. I mean, it's Supercomputing is always an exciting show. And, it uh, is. It is not disappointing this year. Incredible stuff happening. Yes, it, it, yeah. it, it is an exciting show. I mean, I know we were talking about how we're all nerds over here uh, before we got <laughs> before we went live, and I feel like this is one of the great shows for nerds. Yeah. And we all get to nerd out with our nerdy friends. And there's some really exciting announcements. Speaking of Shimon, big announcement out of Weka this morning. Yeah, you um, want to tell us a little bit about the warp? Exactly. Yeah, uh, I'm glad that we can finally uh, talk about it. It's been in the making for a long time, and. And finally, we can uh, tell the story. Yes. So we created this reference architecture called Warp, uh, Weka AI RAG reference platform. Uh, what we're seeing is that, uh, as you know, Weka is a data platform, a high performance data platform, but we're, we're, we were just talking about it. Um, we, we're seeing customers still struggling with how to implement RAG inferencing. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a lot of moving components. Honestly, there is no real blueprint or protocols defined yet for that, and we, we created this environment that shows all of the layers that are needed. Uh, we're actually heavily using Run AI and the NVIDIA stack also, the GPUs, but also the yeah. software frameworks, NIMS, NEMO, uh, yeah. and more. Um, and we're, we built this reference architecture that the customer can now, can now use to, to, first of all, learn and see how is an AI reference platform, how, do, how is an AI inferencing environment looks, looks like in production. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference in, between a POC environment yeah. in a production environment, so how does it look in production as it scales out and in, cross to multiple clouds and back, uh, and then obviously show the VECA, VECA value in that. Right. Which is super exciting. Congratulations, by the way. I know, yeah. I know this just came out this morning, so very much yes. breaking news. What does that mean for partners like you? Well, I mean, again, if I take a step back, first I'll just, I like to introduce terms so that I know the audience understands. Everyone likes to introduce the terms, it trains our AI too. RAG is retrieval augmented generation, mm -hmm. and it's a way that you can customize foundational models to basically you know, incorporate proprietary data, or data that you care about that you want represented in your AI models. So basically, as it relates to NVIDIA, you know, we've been down this path of trying to you know, be a proponent of AI and help customers adopt AI, and so I think by providing you know, more guidelines, blueprints, templates, APIs that make it easy to plug and play and leverage these tools, that's really what we're trying to do here at the show and just in general. So working obviously with Weka and Run AI, it's a great example of doing exactly just that. You know, what I'm hearing from both of you that I think is really awesome is not only are we learning together, because we all are on yeah. this adoption curve quite at an accelerated rate, but yeah. we're teaching together is what I just heard from you. Yeah, which is, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Which is pretty cool. Absolutely. <laughs> How I do think you it feel? Also, it yeah, also go for it. It reminds me what happened in, in the training market, right? We're speaking here about inference. But four or five years ago, we had in a similar situation for training workloads, right? Exactly. Uh, AI, you know, how, how are you training uh, AI models, deep learning models, how do you build your AI infrastructure, how do you build your, your software stack on top of it, right? So no, there were no best practices, right? People were learning that. So I think that we're in a similar situation right now for the inference market, right? And then blueprints like, wow, and reference architecture really are like a good good move, like good to be progressing the entire community forward in the right yeah. direction. So that's amazing. That yeah. was an endorsement and a half if I ever heard it. It's exciting. <laughs> I just heard wow too. I wish you, that, that sounds fun. How, how long have you all been working together actually? Now I'm curious about this. Yeah. So Ronnie yeah. I and Weka have been working for several years already. Right? Yeah, six, uh, seven years. Yeah. And yeah. at least yes. from the Weka side in NVIDIA from day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we've been involved with a lot of these guys early on because like I said, NVIDIA is a platform it's, company mm -hmm. and so we want to really work with our extended ecosystem to make mm -hmm. sure that as they empower their customers, we can work together to basically make sure these, these solutions are easy to adopt and they're, they're you know, ready to be deployed. And so a lot of solutions yeah. that they bring to market perfectly complement that. So. so, Yeah, exactly, and we at Run AI, we're working together with NVIDIA, for sure with Weka for six, seven years, yeah. but with NVIDIA, I think for four, five years. Yeah. Right, yeah. so we started early. We started, I think, around DJXs, right? NVIDIA started to sell DJXs, right? It's like a new offering in the market, and NVIDIA wanted to build the, the ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. The ISV, software vendors around the DJX, and we were part of that ecosystem, so 
the, the relationship with NVIDIA started there. And it was a, a, from a business perspective and it moves forward in the last four or five years. It's amazing, amazing part partnership that we have with NVIDIA. So you all knew we were going to be hitting this hype curve moment right now then, is what I'm hearing. No doubt. We saw it coming a long time. You, you've been preparing, <laughs> just waiting for the rest <laughs> of us to catch up. So you know what's funny? <laughs> um, I would say maybe 2018, for example, um, I remember Jensen was doing this, this special address and he basically had this pie chart that said the you know, old HPC, the new HPC, and he was describing this new sort of workload mix, 45% was going to be AI, and I never forget it. I remember he showed the chart, and then you could hear the audience that was just like, nah, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but it's so <laughs> interesting to see if you fast forward, you know, like in the last four or five years, if you walk the show floor, there's so much discussion about AI, it's having so much I haven't heard that acronym at all. No, I, I mean, <laughs> come on, right? exactly. <laughs> Who, who's heard of AI, like I said? Yeah. But there's so much transformative impact that it's having in, in science. So, I mean, we're here at HBC, so they're you know, at supercomputing. So it's having incredible impact on science, but now also enterprises and other organizations are adopting it, and so these type of solutions help you know, simplify and, and streamline that process. So, yeah. very cool. Yeah, and go I think for the it, vision right. was there since 20, 2006, right? Yeah. 2006, yeah. then sure. they started to, buy, to build CUDA, right? Yeah. To CUDA to enable mm -hmm. more developers to build applications on top, of the, on top of GPUs, right? And they aimed for scientific computing, right? right. So the vision was there, scientific computing, and yeah. turned out uh, 10 years afterwards right. that AI is a big scientific computing application that's going to change the world. And so the it's going to change the world, hopefully save the planet. There's so many things. Absolutely. <laughs> so many. Not to be casual about it, but no, I feel no, no, like. No, no. There's, there's a lot of um, interesting discussion right now. And so, you know, I just came back from Climate Week a couple weeks ago, and it was really fascinating to see all the incredible use cases from climate and weather forecasting yeah. to grid management optimization, you know, to renewables research. I mean, it was all these incredible use cases that were yeah. all being powered by AI. And so it's really cool to be at the center of all that and see all the great work happening for sure. Uh, I can tell you by the way that from our side we're, we're seeing that we're doing AI for many years, so we're installed in these large scale AI scientific projects and, and some production, large scale productions. And it was it was almost like it was a niche a few years ago, like the vision yeah. was there, but it was it was almost like reserved for a group of people. They knew what CUDA is, they right. the data Such scientists. Such a great point, I'm really glad right. you're bringing this and, up. And it, yes. it was very specialized, and what we're seeing that's very different in the last two, two and a half years, is, is now it's going into the enterprise. My, my grandmother can now talk with <laughs> AI with me. My right. little daughter is arguing with her AI phone. Yeah. Right, so, <laughs> so when it gets to that level of the enterprises, uh, th that's where technology really booms and that's where everybody can benefit from it. Yeah. I totally agree with you there. I, I, I feel like as nerds we're kind of having a moment because now everybody <laughs> knows what we do. Or at least the industry we work in. Yes. And I, and I yes. think the scientific, I'm glad we brought up scientific applications and, and climate week. I'd love to chat with you more about that. I was bummed I couldn't make it. I think it really helps make AI real for yeah, a lot of people for sure. because for sure. it's not just this hypothetical thing that we're all doing in our little nerd right. lands. Yeah. It, it's yeah. very much this, this. So the barrier to entry actually yeah. is much lower. In the past I had to, to know what I'm doing, all of the M M ML uh, provisioning, all of the, of the training of the models. Now I just go and download models to my laptop even right. and I'm running it. It, yeah. Which is pretty wild. Right, yes. and, right. And, it, and it kind of ties back to the announcement um, today right. because you know, NVIDIA has been sort of um, championing this new API driven model, right? Which is, you know, mm -hmm. how do you make this drag and drop easy for people to implement? And so we've in implemented something called NVIDIA Inference Microservices, which are NIMS, right? Yes. And so those are basically containerized, you know, foundational models that customers can download, fine tune, tweak, use RAG workflows to help make them their own and make them easily adoptable. And so what's really cool about it, like I said, when you look at the, the suite of products, we have something called Nemo Retriever, mm -hmm. which is basically a RAG uh, workflow automation technique. And then there's also something called QVS, which is our Q vector search optimization library. And so it accelerates a lot, a lot of the um, vector databases like Milvis, which is incorporated in this, this new workflow that we're highlighting through this announcement. So it's really incredible to see you know, NVIDIA, um, we see have all these different tools and libraries and acceleration techniques. So it's great to see them all being adopted and, and worked into actual production level workflows. It's, it's really exciting. Yeah. What, I, uh, AI workloads are huge, but if we're able to leverage models like that or download things or even, yeah. I mean shoot, you can even play with stuff in your browser at this point, which is pretty crazy to think yeah. about out loud. How, how does today's announcement and your collective collaboration going to impact user experience? So I think what we aim to do, sorry Phil. Go ahead. Uh, what we aim to do is we aim to simplify it. We, we mm -hmm. wanted to show 
to educate. I think that was the first topic that we touched on. How, how, do, how is an AI rack inferencing environment, how does it look like? Yeah. What are the components, what are the layers? And then we wanted to make sure that uh, customers have an easy blueprint to start their journey on. And, and this blueprint is composed out of multiple layers and we each participate in each of these layers, contributing and actually right. amplifying each other's capabilities. Right, yeah. exactly, and I think you know, now enterprises understand that AI is a transformative technology, right? It's out there, the value, right? The potential for value is there, right? It's yeah. now about like just getting to that value. And I think there's, it's about experimentation right now, experimenting yeah. with, with LLMs and experimenting with closed source LLMs, but we also see big demand right now for open source LLMs, right? Huge. Putting open source LLMs, open weight LLMs right. on, inf on infrastructure, on enterprises' own it GPUs, yeah. right? Uh, for multiple reasons, right? Like they want to control their data, they want to control their IP, they want to control costs, right? So then open source models provide a, a path forward in that sense. Yeah. But then it becomes difficult. Then it becomes difficult, right? Yeah. How, do I, how do I deploy those models on my own infrastructure, right? NIMS come to, sure. NIMS come to help. How, how do I orchestrate it? How do I scale it, right? Scaling it efficiently, right, yeah. becomes a big, big challenge. Yeah. And you know, people are speaking about GPU utilization, right? When you scale yeah. your application, GPU utilization, right. the cost of those LLMs, the cost to serve those LLMs becomes a real, a real, a real problem. Right, right, so GPU utilization, as we right. all move forward and LLMs become more and more important, GPU utilization will become more and more important. Just increasing GPU utilization and reducing the cost of serving LLMs. Yeah, and wh what we found, by the way, wh when we went through that journey of, of describing warp, creating ball, warp, mm -hmm. building it, we, we saw that, uh, obviously, as I mentioned, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of frameworks, orchestration, data challenges, whether you're scaling or not, and, and not all of them are actually the GPUs. Uh, so right. we're hitting some, when we, we measure our efficiency by times to token, cost per token, token throughput, there's a lot of token yeah. uh, economics oh, yeah. that our customers <laughs> yeah. and Tokenomics we're, 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 right. we're in a new era of tokenomics, right. man, our yeah. blockchain era, now we're, now we're in this era exactly. of tokenomics. Exactly, yeah. it's the new yeah. blockchain era. Oh no, it totally yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. now we need to explain to people what, what is a token, what, what is, is important, token? but yeah. enterprises are now in the business of measuring their ROI on their AI investment. Yeah. So the more tokens Which is you not can a show, cheap investment in most well, cases. It, in that, it's more, not, but it's more, the more efficient you can be, the better. So I'll just yeah. repeat. No, and please, and yeah, what yeah. we saw is that we're constantly, we're scaling the environment when we built Warp. Uh, we're scaling the environment in terms of GPUs. And then we hit a bottleneck. And then the bottleneck was not actually the yeah. GPUs, it was a chain server that was actually uh, bombarded. So we had to, we're using Run AI to just automatically scale oh. to another chain server. Suddenly the, the GPUs are on bottleneck. So, so there's all of these uh, scale out, scale up, scale in yeah. uh, considerations that yeah. uh, eventually allows you to get the token economics uh, much better. Yeah, yeah, so, and, and I mean, I think we're in this, you know, sort of evolution, right? We talked about it earlier around, you know, training was the first big article, hurdle, I should say, where people were trying to understand how they can build and train models, and they use foundational models, and they said, okay, well, that's not specifically to what I need. Then they started saying, okay, how can I use RAG or fine tuning to customize the models? And now we're at a point, I think, like it was, like it was alluding to earlier, they're deploying these in production, right? And so you go from your, what we call AI foundry, to building, developing models, to the AI factory where you're building and producing tokens. And that has a whole different set of considerations, utilization, productivity, making sure that you're, you're being able to use Kubernetes to scale efficiently, mm -hmm. effectively and efficiently. Yeah. So it really introduces a new set of considerations when people are deploying these models in production. And that's where we are today. And that's the exciting part about it because right. the point of AI isn't to train models. Like, that, oh, that's, I know, that's and, we, and, and there's so much emphasis an on that right now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like, means, guys, wait, just let it out there in the wild. Exactly, yeah. the means is really to get it in inferences and to get it deployed in production mm -hmm. where you can really make these real-time impacts. Yeah. Well, an inference is what makes AI real-time. Absolutely. When it, right. when it comes to, to realizing it's some the of value. these. It, yes. Exactly. Everything Nothing, else then is all just this plumbing. big bloated yes. stuff doesn't matter. It's like, yes. you know, it's like yes. running on a treadmill but never actually getting out there and doing the marathon. It's right. kind of like, it, it's, it's who can, I, yeah. I, yes. I'm glad you brought that up. I, I'm one of the bigger inference nerds on the team as nice. well. So, and I, and <laughs> nice. I, but I think that makes the biggest difference. That's that's yeah. what's yeah. going to make it for your grandma or for your for your family. Yeah. That's what's going to make all of this real. We're yeah. playing with it like it's a toy right now, and in, in certain cases, in certain applications. But I think that's really what's going to make that that big broad impact. Okay. Well, this is fun. Now that we're here and we're we're in this part of the pathway, mm -hmm. what do you hope? your collaborative efforts, but even our industry as a whole, what challenges do you hope we solve collectively with all this new tech? Yeah, I mean, I think quite simply is, is to help 
you know, ease that transition to, to production, like we've been describing. Yeah. You know, if everyone is sort of crossing that chasm to adopt AI, look for new use cases, look for opportunities to get efficiencies, to get new revenue opportunities, we want to help make that transition as seamless and as smooth as possible. Seamless and smooth as possible. I'll tell you what I'm uh, hoping for. Yes, please. Uh, big vision. Obviously, as, yeah. as I mentioned, everything is a plumbing. Even when I show warp to customers, prospects, partners, I'm, we're showing all of the layers of warp. I'm saying everything under the application is plumbing. Yeah. I'm sorry, we're all plumbers. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. No, no, that's, you're right. But that's incredibly yeah. talented plumbers. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, you and, all and need plumbing plumbers, is important, right? right? Let's give you um, <laughs> but but it, it's how, how efficient can you be? But then what, what challenges do we solve? So you mentioned climate. Climate is huge for us. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. I know that for NVIDIA as well. Um, if we can actually model and, and solve climate changes uh, using that, uh, we, we already are seeing a lot of research in life science. So there's already, it's funny, there's a lot of GPUs acceleration sure. in life science, which is not AI. Yeah. Uh, prior EM, genomic sequencing, di digital pathology. But sure. then we're starting to see more and more in AI in, yes. in uh, life science as well. So cancer research, um, Oh yeah, drug research and yeah. more, right? So, Detection. so these are the big things. So uh, things. And I'll tell you, my, my, my wife's private dream is yeah. like an, an assistant that will just clean the house, so kind of like the hey, robot exa exactly. that Jensen What's mentioned. in it for me? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's where she wants to right. go. <laughs> but I think I'm we're seeing you. already, like, oh, we're seeing already value for me. Yeah, it's happening, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's like, we, it's happening, it's going to change everything. Like we yeah. all, like, probably, right? That's, that's what will yeah. happen. But we see already like the software industry is being changed right now, right? Like Absolutely. every like software tool right now needs to have AI, right? Right, like right. developers right now are coding with Copilot, with yeah. Corsa, with AI tools that Absolutely. are just programming for themselves, right? Yeah. Like so, so I think the software, the software industry is one of the first industries that are, that are actually being changed right now because yeah. of AI, right? Yeah. right. So Absolutely. that's 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 interesting. It's it's such an exciting time. Wow. Okay, I have we are tearing through time here. I have <laughs> one last question for you, since you're all fabulous guests, and I'm sure we'll have you on at Supercomputing next okay. year. And there I want is. you each to answer this, so you can. <laughs> <laughs> thumb wrestle over who goes first. What do you hope to say when we're sitting down in St. Louis next year that you can't yet say today? I mean, there's been a pretty big change from the last time we were here to now, so what do you think our next little leap is going to be? So, I'll do my own selfish plug. Um, I hope that we can really celebrate the work that is happening. Um, to, I, let me be clear first. This, this supercomputing, I see Grace Hopper, I see Hopper, um, making an incredible splash, an incredible contribution to all these different you know, research use cases. Um, the Gordon Bell Prizes, they had some incredible work done on Grace Hopper. So that's, that's been a really you know, sort of uh, you proud moment yeah. here this year. <laughs> Next year, at Supercomputing, I hope we're having some of these same conversations about Blackwell, particularly some of these inference use cases. Mm -hmm. If you walk the show floor, you see a lot of you know, um, Blackwell, MBL72, GP200 on the floor. So I think as we get start to hit that production ramp, we'll see systems coming online, we'll see researchers leveraging that capability, and there'll be a lot to celebrate there as well. I think you are right about <laughs> that. What about I, you two? Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> So actually, for me, it's my first supercomputer, right? Funny enough. Welcome right? like, to the fam. Yeah, nice. yeah. Welcome, I'm yeah. surprised to hear that, but also kind of makes sense are, from a timeliness perspective. Yeah, we yeah. are trying AI. We've been here like for uh, for we have three, four years. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but for me, it's the first time. So actually, it's like the energies here are amazing, right? Yeah. You can feel the energies. You can feel yeah. like exciting stuff are happening yeah. with AI, right? So I think like next year, let's see like more energies for us. Like I'm waiting to see more and more AI applications changing the world, right? So waiting to see that. Yeah, I'll give you my, my two cents. So let's I'm here for, for a few years already. And, and again, yeah. when I think when my first supercomputing was really HPC oriented. Yeah. Everything, large supercomputing centers, mm -hmm. simulations. Yeah. Uh, slowly it started being into some of the AI conversation. This is, I think, the first or second really AI-centric supercomputing. Mm -hmm. What I hope to see next year, I ac actually, it's called supercomputing, but I would like to see it enterprise supercomputing. Mm -hmm. I would like to see the proliferation of AI through enterprises. What, what we're creating today is to allow actually enterprises to break the barriers of entry, just start in implementing AI. Yeah. Uh, and more than that, I would like to see custom, uh, customers and enterprises worldwide. So currently, there's yeah. a lot of, uh, Again, GPUs are a rare resource, and, yeah. and you need to move the data to the GPUs. So what we're what what we're building is to help customers break these barriers and just use them wherever they are, and, and get the value in an enterprise secure fashion. So. Yep.
Very cool. Well stated. I can't wait to discuss all three of those predictions <laughs> next year. There you go. Ronan and Shimon. Dion, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. This thank has been fun. I feel smarter. Us. Your energy is great. It's Absolutely. just like the energy here on the show floor. <laughs> I hope you're getting as much energy from these exciting conversations as I am here in Atlanta, Georgia at Supercomputing 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.